Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, would it be fair to say that uh, without Iran's financing, without its missile uh, supplies, uh, without its strategic support, uh, that uh, Iran's proxies uh, either would not exist, at least not as they are today, or would not have the reach and ability that they have today? Who would you like to? Uh, yeah, bo both of you. Suzanne? Actually. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Okay, so then uh, if that is the case, uh, and uh, reading from Dr. Maloney's written testimony, where she says, the assumptions underlying Obama-era diplomacy towards Tehran, a conviction that the Islamic Republic could be persuaded <coughs> to accept pragmatic compromises that served his country's interests are no longer credible. And if that is the case, and I believe I agree with your assessment, uh, then the question of the financing, uh, which has been a big part of uh, uh, Mr. Hook's testimony, I think is incredibly important. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, if Iran is dramatically curtailed in its flow of revenue, it has domestic consequences in terms of those who wish to see a change in their own country, and we have seen elements of that, which have been snuffed out and which the world has largely not embraced to try to create such peaceful change. And at the same time, it fuels its missile technology with the, the end of UN Security Council resolutions this past October, uh, and it provides the resources and the missiles uh, to its proxy, <laughs> and of course, uh, of late, uh, providing drone technology to the Russians in the war in Ukraine, um, as well as continues to fuel its nuclear program, for which it has failed to meet to the IAEA uh, safeguards and standards and inspection requirements. We know less today, at least three of the IAEA, than we did before. So all of that brings to my mind, and taking the last point you made, uh, Dr. Maloney, about China, I think the Chinese have shown that they're happy to see conflict in the world. Because if they, they didn't, they'd do something differently in uh, supporting Russia in Ukraine. Conflict for the Chinese, especially when the West is involved in that conflict, is in yours to their benefit. And I wish that they saw it as a, a, a global power to be part of an international order that would seek to avoid conflict. But I believe the Chinese, I believe Xi Jinping has a different view. If that is the case, isn't it time to do two things? One, internationalize, get our allies who were resistant to uh, joining us on a sanctions regime, to now multilateralize those sanctions, and two, to ratchet up those sanctions dramatically in terms of enforcement, including, including towards the Chinese, because that is the biggest spigot by which Iran is receiving huge amounts of money. Mr. Hook? <clears throat> Senator, I fully agree with everything you said. Uh, you can stop there. Um, I'm, just, I just, I, I just, I'm just kidding. We have to have a little humor here at, at times. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, um, it would be good if we could multilateralize the sanctions. The problem is that if we go to New York to the UN Security Council, China and Russia will veto that. And yeah, so, I'm not looking through UN because that's, that's, that's not going to fly. Right. So I think it has to be done bilaterally. And that is something that was a huge focus for me when I was in office, building a coalition of people we were able to get a number of countries to designate Hezbollah as a foreign terrorist organization. We worked with, a, with a Treasury under Secretary Mnuchin, worked a lot with the Financial Action Task Force in Paris, and FATF imposed sanctions on Iran. We worked with SWIFT. SWIFT de-SWIFTed 33 Iranian banks. Uh, Mahan Air and Iranian Air, they fly all over the world. We worked with airports and governments to stop Iranian planes from landing. Well, those are in their all countries. examples of how you uh, ultimately bite off the, the flow of money. I think so, uh, but it's got to be. I'd like to get my last few seconds Dr. Maloney's view on this. 
I think there's far more that we could be doing to enforce our existing sanctions, uh, especially with respect to the oil that flows to China. That's the, the lifeblood for the Iranian regime, and it has been what has enabled Iran to have the resources to provide to its proxies around the region. And finally, Mr. Chairman, I, I, with the expiration of Security Council Resolution 2231 this past October, uh, new restrictions on Iran's ballistic missiles and drones have to be implemented, which is why I introduced the Missiles Act, and I hope that as the chairman and the ranking member work towards develop a, a mutual Iran legislation that the, the chair will consider that. Thank you very much.